recording. Hi, everybody. I uh, welcome to the Chaos uh, OSPO Plus Plus University OSPO Working Group. I think a number of people are traveling uh, this week, particularly with FOSSI going on. Um, so I know that a number of Chaos folks are either there or kind of on their way there. So um, I just wanted to kind of consolidate a few things um, for this group. And I'll bring these up here. There are a couple documents that um, Saeed and Stephanie have been working on. What is this? First few to test new AI features of Goot. Should I do it? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure you want to be one of the first few to test AI features, Matt. <laughs> but you know, that's my take, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um. So a couple. Let's see. Measuring. Oh, close. I got that. A couple of things that I just wanted to bring up. I was hoping we could just take a look at a few of these documents today. I don't know. Sean, are you in front of a computer? I can be, yeah. I'm trying to tidy some stuff up, but yeah, I'm in front of a computer. You look like you were walking around. Yeah, I was um, putting some stuff together for my next meeting. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm in front of a computer. Did you want me to look at something? Yeah, so if on the just so we could maybe work a little bit on these. Um, so measuring OSS in universities. Do you see that document, everybody, yep. in the in the minutes? I see it. Okay, so again, this is a document that um, I think Stephanie and Saeed had started to put together. So I was hoping, and this is one that. Um, Claire had taken kind of from the, the notes that we had back in Brussels. And so I was hoping we could just take a look at this for like 10 minutes yeah. and just kind of reflect on it and see if there's any questions that come from it. And then the next document I was hoping we could take a look at were kind of the specific goals and scopes of this group. See what I'm saying? So the first one is kind of the ideas that came, this is measuring OSS in universities, and then kind of bringing those down into the goals and scope of this particular group. And then lastly, you know, you know this thing, I've been kind of working on this because I think one of the things Saeed had mentioned last time was trying to land on maybe a few metrics that could be uh, used to demonstrate particular things uh, within university OSPOs. So it's just kind of a, a sequence of events. So could I ask everybody to to just kind of read this document, the measuring OSS in universities and either make edits or put comments to your reactions? Would that be okay? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> mute myself and stop my share screen, but just like five minutes or something like that to just give this a quick read. Oh, yep, I'm trying to do that for you.
How's everybody doing on this document? I'm going to have a few questions for folks.
Okay, I'm through goal four. I don't know where you all are at. You're muted, Sean, somehow. I think I muted myself earlier. Um, yeah, I've been through the the whole thing, but I, okay. I've been through the detailed goal stuff before, so obviously I made a small edit at the top and a comment at the bottom for Claire's comment. Okay. comment. So mm -hmm. I was to share my screen here again. Anybody can comment here. Um, the goal one of research excellence, what does that, what does that mean to you with respect to an OSPO at a university? Well, let me speak from the University of Missouri's perspective. Sure. Research yes, excellence is code for us remaining in this elite category of AAU universities. And we're like at the bottom, like we're always scraping to stay in it. And so anything that advances our reputation the administrators love. And so, so universities that are at reputation climbing, this is going to matter more. So what would be an example of how open source could play a role in that in, from your perspective? Because I'm trying to I mean, like... From, so from my perspective, and again, just using my own university as an example, we've made substantial like hundreds of millions of dollars in investment in life science research. So we know that a lot of university open source and scientific open source kind of overlaps in that space. And I think one way of demonstrating the value of what we have accomplished physical infrastructure wise would be to begin to contribute to the, the core software technologies that are used in, in bioinformatics, precision okay. medicine, other kinds of research. You know, it would be a way to bolster our reputation. Okay. So is it, I'm trying to like, like research actually, if this this is the goal, mm -hmm. this goal is describing how open source can contribute. You gave some specific examples to building and maintaining research excellence. Is mm -hmm. that is that yeah. right? Yeah, I think it's a signal of, of research excellence in certain disciplines to be active in open source projects. And so this activity can signal, I think for the university's perspective, the participation in open source doesn't create the excellence but it's a, it can be a powerful signal and a promotional tool that universities will respect. And even though that's not why us scientists do it, it's a useful argument for engaging larger budget people to try to you know, obtain resources to do this. Okay. Kevin has his hand up. Yeah, yeah. In no, the I physical see. world too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I always do that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, there is a button. Uh, I, I know, but I avoid the button. I like to put my hands up. Uh, so kind of kind of uh, translating between, I, I know a, a university OSPO is going to be different than a kind of a corporate OSPO. However, if we if we kind of translate the, the purpose of an OSPO in these, these different uh, and into these different organizational contexts. I think goal one is really kind of about organizational strategy. Uh, and then goal two becomes. Well, hold on. Uh, is it like how open source, how, oops, how open source, I don't know why that's a different font, but how open source is connected to organizational strategy? Uh, so I, I would say goal one is about creating organizational strategy that benefits the university. Uh, and then when we go down, you know, when we kind of translate these across to what, uh, what it would look like in a corporate OSPO, that goal three research translation is maybe more about how uh, open source benefits the individual researchers within the organization uh, and then goal two would be how the organization educates students and researchers in their organization about research well, let me let's and, can, I, 
can you hold like how those all fit down below i was trying to go like just yeah, i'm just sorry thinking, like, what what one of what does this mean you know what i mean so like that, that's it jacob did you have a comment you you came off of hidden camera i was wondering if you were doing that for a reason okay okay um okay so is so, this so what i'm i'm sorry so, so what i'm saying is it's kind of a it's a matter of it's a matter of perspective here and the, if the OSPO has these, if the OSPO has these certain functions, uh, then these these functions kind of uh, focus on different perspectives. So goal one is this: it's this organizational perspective. It's the it's open source in a university, sure. and what those strategies look like. So I'm now that Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Um, it it. At UC Santa Cruz, like, how do you think about like this first goal, like research excellence and the role that the OSPO plays? Thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to get all my all my screens up at the right. No place. problem. I can put this. In, <laughs> I, if somebody could put this in the chat too. Oh, thanks, Fanad. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, um, yeah. And it is already in there. Actually, thank you. Yeah, I'm just trying to as we go through these goals because I think this is part of those documents that you've been working on with Saeed. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. This is like trying to really spell out what these things mean. Right. So like an OSPO at a university, we say goal one is is research excellence. So what is that, like, what does that mean? Is it is it about these two first, these things of like describing how an open source engagement that's occurring at the university can contribute to building and maintaining research excellence at the university? You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. Is... Well, for us, we see it kind of. I mean, it's a, the, what our our big um, issue is always like how using open source technologies and um, and proceed uh, methodologies. So not just open source, but the methodologies behind it has actually yeah. really been important for um, uh, improving and like uh, improving research uh, impact. Um, so, and then the impact, I think, it has direct relationship with what we would see as research excellence in that way too. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, some, you can argue that, I mean, that could be an argument, like just because it's excellent research, does it have bad, uh, it does it have impact and where that comes down. But I, our issue has always been the focus on the impact of the research outside the university setting. So the OSPO in this case, does it help recognize that impact or does it right. help that's how we we we've structured it and not just from an ospo perspective so like if we were talking about this issue just from a general understanding of how open source and openness works within a university setting um i think that yeah i think it's the the not just an ospo but anyone that's focusing on those issues wants to bring that attention to and that's something we've been really looking at it was like shining a light on how open source um positively impacts that what we're talking about the research excellence so you know we were like the massive amount of open source is being used but not really recognized yeah um is kind of a huge part of and then how that it, it, it trying to like we're always trying to put a value on it not necessarily like a you know a you know a, yeah a, a just just a value with regards to like how much money it's bringing in but also a value of how much prestige it's bringing in how better your students are you know outcomes are all that stuff yeah. And and so it's I feel like it's a multifaceted aspect of it. Um, I mean, I think the even the student component, it's not quite just education because it's also their abilities to be researchers. So I think that all so that all kind of uh, I think uh, comes in. I don't know if that helps with the definition at all. No, it does. <laughs> one of the it things, makes it more convoluted. <laughs> one of the things I, mean, I, think I would I say. Can... I would say let's. I, I would our, our, I look at it from a little bit bigger than you know I, we look at it that way as more of a um, bringing not just increasing their research excellence but also being under the assumption that what's already there is that I said it and I, I, I we're all in the same meetings but I said one or the, that one way everybody I think a number of people were at the Atlantic, Atlantic Council is our biggest issue isn't you know promoting um, research excellence through open source it's that recognizing the amount of research open source that's, yeah. out there that's already doing that but we just don't know what we don't know 
And so that it's can one of these conversations, listening to you talk and kind of Kevin talk and Sean talk, one of the things that I think is coming from this that's unexpected for me is that the OSPOs at the university are, at least at this point, a lot about discovery right. and like elevating what's already happening and, and recognizing that work and maybe a little less about enablement of that work. I don't mean that you don't enable things because right. you're there to help, of course, yeah. but it seems like there's a lot around just what is even happening. Oh, I think I think discovery is huge, way more of what's going on with us in enablement at this point, okay. which is what we are doing. And I think UC wide, I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's just the UC Santa Cruz OSPO that's doing it. I think okay. other folks that we're interacting with in our system, it's, it's, it's not, just, it's about, there is some, there is some, uh, just, well, we need to help, you know, like, especially some sure. of the folks that are coming out of the libraries and stuff. It's like, oh, you need to support it. But every, a lot of people are like, yeah, if you don't discover it, you don't know who your partner can be. And then it's about once the discovery has occurred, like <laughs> you, you assign that discovery to say research excellence. Like this is yeah. clearly elevating how we are as a, as a university, as an excellent university, right, right, right. not a great phrase, but Okay, um, so if we were to look at goal two, is this a lot about how did people read this goal? I read it as trying to understand honestly where open source is in the curriculum. <laughs> to right. be honest with you, that's that was my that was my read of this. I don't know about other people. I I'm not sure if this is the right place for it, but I also see. Um, the, let me think. Make sure I'm not missed. Just missed it because I reviewed this a while back. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like it's the lowering barriers to different students as well. But you and you, so you talk about that with opportunities, but being way very explicit about open source being a methodology for it, lowering barriers in education. So it's because it's not just my students; it's not the students at UCSC that we're focusing on. Um, you know, we focus on the you know students from like high school students students from community colleges to other yep. students that, you know, so our projects are actually also dependent on, not dependent, but like also interacting with students outside. So, gotcha. um, so that's a part, of, so it's education, I guess as a public university, we, um, although we're, our main goal is to educate our specific students that are in our university, there's also a un, kind of understood goal of um, general thing, improvement of education for the community. Gotcha. So um, that's, I think that's part that fit, it should probably fit in there as well, as well. I mean, at least, I mean, that may be different. I mean, different academic institutions are going to have a different, I think, say on that. There may be like, no, that's, that's way too broad. Um, but I, I do see as a, a part of the University of California that we have such linkages with our community college system, our CS, our, you know, our state university system, um, and then just our communities in general, that that's, um, so that part that plays a role as well, and that in that part of open source is lowering barriers to those folks. Gotcha. Also important. Okay, no, this is great. Um, but yeah, they do talk about open source de workforce development. I think is also important. Um, that kind of hits into that a little bit, but it's not as explicit. Uh, so, and again, this is you discovering how this is already being done. Right. Yeah. Okay. And and of course, or, and for education, I still feel like this is more. This is when enablement starts to happen a little bit more. Okay. Whereas I I don't think it's being fully done with at least when with on our the realm that we're looking at. Um, but you know, I'm sure there are people out. Like I still think it's something within California. Like the the uh, the community colleges aren't being tapped enough, and that's one of our big projects gotcha. with our postdoc. Um, one of our postdocs is her her focus on you know, improving the, um, the work, workforce, workforce pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, okay. I don't know if you've met Emily. <laughs> I think I have one. Yes. Yeah. 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 In she, one of the meetings. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, so she, she's doing a lot of that work. Okay. Yeah. Great. So then what is, um, I'm going to turn to this other comments. What is research translation mean for folks and Kevin you had a comment too you put it in the chat do you want to speak to that those are, I'm guessing those are new headers that you're proposing yeah yeah so I think the I think these four goals actually kind of align with the 
with kind of the, the four major areas that, that corporate OSPOs often kind of focus on. You know, and that, that first one being kind of organizational strategy, just that, that high level, uh, high level organizational concerns and decisions that are, that are related very specifically to the, uh, to the organization of the university. And then, uh, a second major concern for an OSPO is kind of educating their employees on how to contribute to open source. And I think that in, in education or in universities, that translates to educating students as well. So students and uh, researchers on how to contribute to open source. And then that, that third one, research translation, I think it would aligns well with kind of contributor management, right? Where we start to, we measure the performance of contributors and we start to understand what the, uh, what these contributions mean on an individual level, right? So this might be the, the, the impact of a work that a, that a specific contributor slash researcher has. And this, this could be translated into things that would maybe help with tenure. And then the, the fourth kind of major concern that corporate OSPOs have is being kind of the, the community liaison, right? So the, this, uh, a, uh, an organizational mechanism that can help researchers and contributors communicate and interact with open source communities that are outside of the organization. Uh, so I, th I think all of these goals actually translate uh, pretty well across the board to these kind of these four major uh, kind of concerns that corporate OSPOs have. And I know the when we translate them, they, they appear a little bit differently, but there's a, a, a it, it fits quite well. So I would, I would recommend maybe changing these headers just to, to kind of be more explicit about, uh, well, along the lines of what I, what I put in there. I like the way you, yeah, kind of <sighs> parallel those, the two, the two types of office. I think actually really, or the and two types of like open source management type of activities in university and, uh, and industry. I really make, I like the way you just put that out. That was, I, I would see that. Yeah. If you want to do the headings as a little bit more like, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, like hands on, not hands on, but like something a little more like, you know, specific, specifying it more and being more, you know, making it more clear what we're doing in that. So I, I would totally um, support that. Yeah. And I think, so three, I might, Kevin, the way you were describing it might need a little bit of work, but I, I like it too. Um, Cause I see, the, how do you, understand how do people understand research translation as they read this here you know sean like at missouri what does research translation mean to you then you're muted if you're talking or if you're not there that's okay too so to to me i think research translation or tech transfer is about products that are produced in a university that can one become commercialized or two may have an impact beyond um, just like a publication. So is that aligned with where you're thinking, Kevin? You know what I mean? It's about taking that open source product and kind of like getting it out into the world in a way that's not necessarily academic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. These are the, the, the artifacts or products that a researcher uh, would produce that can have a, a measurable uh, effect on their career, right? So if you have pat researchers, uh, having a patent is a very good thing, right? So the university wants their researchers to have patents. They, uh, other metrics that might be interested in here would be maybe open source project citation counts or things like that. But basically, ways of ways of understanding the uh, the ways of understanding the work that the contributors are creating or the researchers are creating uh, at a at more of a contributor level rather than an organizational level. Which is the that first one is is really about organizational strategy. And this third one is about understanding the the artifacts or, or products of this work in more detail. Okay. 
if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yep. So I, Steph, I'm curious, like Stephanie, do you look at, at UC Santa Cruz? Are you looking at, um, say, open source artifacts in this case that researchers are producing that go beyond, you know, the UC system that may be commercialized? That may... Oh, so UC based researchers, but yeah. that that are using. Yeah, I mean, we're trying. That's part of what we're the discovery is about. Is like it's not uh, so. And we started out with Cross, it was very more insular, like it very much more like, oh, the research projects we're supporting and industry folks we're working with and and the other partners we're working with. Whereas when we were transforming more to like an OSPO level discussion, it was more like, okay, you see why, what is actually going on and how, what are those linkages? What are those partnerships and collaborations looking like? What kind of variations are there? Um, and that's part of what we're, I think we're we're still having that discussion. I think part of that we're actually like the the discussion we've been having about the repo browser with Georg, which we're totally owe him and um, <laughs> owe him an email back about um, that. Uh, like those those are the types of methodologies we're trying to use to to figure that out. But um, but yeah, it's it's definitely beyond what we our original scope was with regards to okay translation. We've gotten. Yeah, because it, like I, it's not like we were very industry specifically industry focused I, when we got started, for very for, for obvious reasons. Like Seth was how we got our start, yeah. um, but we, as we kind of started working with different projects, we started to see way like you know uh, academic impact, but beyond just UCs, and we, we saw yep. community impact, and then you know sector impact versus industry. You know what I mean? Like it was there's so many different things, and that's what we're trying to kind of capture in some of the work we're, we're some of the um efforts we're doing now no that's that's super helpful thank you yeah. um and do you see kind of you had mentioned like a lot of this research excellence was trying about it was a bit of a discovery type of type of phase for you and you said that the education component is probably a little bit more about yeah. discovery and enablement where yeah, do you it's just i feel like when I look at, at least what I've seen, we've I've seen in within our department and then w- within UCSC, and I think it's a it's different in different UCs, and that's something that we're discussing with our UC network. Okay. Folks. Um, but in UC, I do UCSC, I still see like it's fragmented. I think at best we have one like we have one open source course specifically open source focused course within CS uh, or CSE, um, and we have individual professors probably were using open source and open source techniques. Everybody has a GitHub repository, you know, so, but it's very fragmented. There's no like uh, specific structure or or policy even related to how to bring in uh, open source into the classroom. Um, again, this is a lot of what, what Emily's working on to, uh, to help, uh, that's part of her research project and, and, um, um, and part of our like overall like goal with, within what we're doing in the next couple of years. But um, so that way I feel like it is, it's like, okay, creating some best practices and structures and identifying how open source can be used outside of that kind of one class that we have <laughs> and giving people like um, like templates to use and, and um, so, and making it easier for faculty outside of traditional computer science programmers to, to um, pr- programs to do it. I know our hardware folks are, are working and we're working with them as well to look at what they do Would they have a little bit different focus than the software side, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, and that's definitely still for us, uh, to learn where, yeah, we're still like figuring out the enabling part of it. Okay. Well, that's, that's interesting. That was an interesting, um, that was a kind of a, a different case of, of class to class, you know, like having one class, like if I'm using open source, I'm guessing this is what you're talking about. Like I'm using open source in one class and kind of templating that in such a way that say Kevin could use it in his class. Okay. Right, right. And especially, I, I think that is especially useful for those who are outside of the computer science yeah. area. So yeah, that- and I think that was one of the things like up here, I forget where, but just a, a discussion, maybe it was in here, but a discussion about kind of getting this beyond just CS and right. into, let's say, College of Business and right. liberal arts and sciences, wherever it might be. Right, right. It's interesting. Okay. Um, and then maybe goal four, this is, by the way, thank you for the comments and <clears throat> discussions on this. The reason I'm I'm really trying to hone in on this is so that we're all kind of in agreement on what these goals are. 
Because I think they're kind of important when we get to this kind of this working group document. And then particularly as we set, say, the goals up here, Kevin, these would change perhaps, you know, with the headers you had just made, but trying to get down into what the metrics are. This is not great down here yet, but kind of what the metrics are that would help us speak to say research excellence. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get us to what the metrics might be. But I think first we need to kind of agree on or get good clarity on what these different goals are. You know what so I mean? another, yeah, yeah, another way to think of those goals is as uh, the function, the function of the OSPO, right? So the OSPO has these four key functions. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because ultimately, I think, you know, Saeed had talked about trying to bring metrics forward to a group. Do you remember that from the last conversation? And so I'm, I'm kind of going at it from top down <laughs> to get to the metrics. And then you could present the metrics and say, here are the ones that speak to research excellence. Here are the metrics that speak to translation, whatever those headers might be. I'm, I've seen and I were also talking. I just, I just, I think I just saw the, um, the slides the way they are. Um, yeah. Whether or not we're using the specifically going to use the terminology of OSPO in this discussion, or right. I mean, I like, and I missed last meeting, so I this may have already been discussed, and I apologize. No, it wasn't discussed, and you oh. can go any direction you'd like. Yeah, no. So whether or not we want to try and do um, just, and I don't remember if we when we when I discussed it when uh, Satan and I were talking about it, just you know, off like you know, generally, I feel like we were talking about open source in academia in general, not specifically, because there's a lot of, going back to the original, um, the original meeting yep. that all of this is stemming from, that discussion, he really, this really impacted him that there was a lot of people doing a lot of that work, but not really interested or not really going towards an OSPO structure. So I worry that if we keep saying OSPO, 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 that, that that's gonna turn off people like, well, that's not what we want. And right. then you're not gonna look so I, mean, I don't want I right. like it, yep. there may be a better way of of you like, you and Saeed lead the way on that one. I don't okay. think I'll talk is. to him. We we oh Saeed, by the way, he, we both had the same problem with our the the um invite not being obliterated from our calendars. So he didn't know about this meeting either. I texted he's like, there's a meeting tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so I it was like the out of sight, out of mind thing. And so yeah, yeah no, right. You look at your weekly <laughs> calendar and if you're not, if it's not there, you're like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think yeah. I mean, I knew it was every two weeks, but for some reason, you know, the last two weeks. I'll, I'll reach out to say again or I'll put a note in the yeah. Site. So I I were I I yeah I got was able to get mine um back on when you gave me that link but um so uh so we do apologize for having no no, no it's all good uh, um so what is this last goal goal four what is that this one has the least amount of information in it so when i read it i was like what i didn't really actually understand what this goal i was. wonder if you can add that into the education part i think that's a, and jacob just left the because that was this that's actually like, something I think he's, was like yeah, that was that was like. Uh, I I feel like it's more. I think it integrates into the three other three in different ways. I mean, the idea of the translation is that it's translating into the community. It's not just industry translation. Yeah. Uh, the workforce development fits in with local and community. Um, so for me, I'm not sure it is a, a community liaison with regards to open source communities and liaisoning with the with folks on the campus okay maybe I can see that um but I and that might actually be something I I, I mean we see ourselves as that but we don't see it as a right we're kind of like a matchmaker I think it's the best the term we use a lot we like match people together and then we walk away so it's not even much a liaison like we don't sit there and continually bolster right. it's like we get you the two together and then we're like okay you got it <laughs> you know this is the from a, it would be way too much to assume that we know enough about every technology involved okay um, so but i'm not sure i mean i'm not i'm not i i i'd like it'd be great to have something that talks about that but um i'm not sure if it needs its own goal or whether it needs to be integrated Could be in part of something else kevin did you have a comment uh, so i i would argue that it's that it's a, a different thing okay uh, that that goal the goal goal four, kind of that OSS community liaison is the, this is the work that happens outside of the organization, 
or maybe kind of at the boundaries of the organization, right? Where the where the previous three uh, goals are really uh, about work that's being done or concerns that are internal to the organization. Uh, so the uh, and and I think there's a there is a difference in how we uh, in 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 how that that goal four exists. I think so. This would be when when members of the university maybe step out of uh, their organization to do work in a project like chaos, for example. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your your engagement with chaos currently would land in that function four, right? Or that, that goal four. But why would that not, to Stephanie's point, necessarily be something that could be included, say, in research translation? I, I do to... see. I do see the point if we're talking about liaisoning with other other parts of open open outside open source communities or out outdoor like that's not. Yeah, I mean, I'm like thinking like, yeah, I'm going to talk at Fossey or I'm going to talk at you know, Linux Foundation to talk about what we're yeah like or something like building those lines. Does that where does that fit into there? Is that something that's its own special thing? Um, and but how is it is and is it can we do we but i do wonder about it as a goal like spe specifying it as a goal what is that too lauded for that particular activity or uh um yeah i'm i'm kind of i i can see both i can see both arguments so i guess i, I think don't, i'm not gonna yeah, it's not a, you know it's not something i'm gonna put my i think that's on. why i preferred the term function rather than goal yeah uh yeah, yeah that's but... a good point too but I, just a thought. I could. I mean, if you're, if we're just talking about measuring, measuring the engagement, then maybe yeah. function four fits with three. Uh, but, but for me, function four is it's a little bit more than measuring the engagement. It's also about uh, kind of actively participating in shaping these external communities. It's also policy related too. We have an external policy part, like discussions on, you know, SBOM policy or any of the security policies that are going, uh, issues that are going on. I know those open source policies at the government and state or, you know, even international level, I think is what would fall under there. And that actually makes, does make sense to me that if you want as a, like an open source and academia um, kind of leadership to take a role in that discussion. There is that's where that's where standards work would occur yeah, as well. Exactly. Standards. Right? Yeah. Of this, there was the S bomb conversation already in goal slash function three. Um, I'll just say my 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 inclination is to reduce the number down to three, just from a simplicity perspective. And if we have to create a fourth one down the road, then we accommodate that. But when I look at these. I feel like particularly maybe this last one would fit in three and kind of the discussion we're having with three and this first one would fit as we already have it in two. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, this is me. I like less, I like fewer things, that's all. <laughs> well, it might be like, I say the, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, maybe it's going beyond the scope to have the policy discussion in this document and and that that maybe is a next step where this first the first thing is to measure the open source in universities and that is uh, and then maybe the the actual discussion of community liaison the policy issues actually should go more towards a discussion specifically for ospos because that is a more of a function of some an like someone that's yeah. Has, it has a structure and an infrastructure like an OSPO, as opposed to universities that there are a lot of universities who don't want to get in on those discussions. Yeah. So like maybe that maybe it is too it would be too daunting for a lot of universities to like see. I mean, I mean especially if we're talking about policy issues. Like for me, it's all that's what I want to do. Like that, I'm all for it. jumping into that to that argument. Uh, because that's what I do, but um, you know, but a lot of people are like, no, I, we just want to stay with the technology. We just want to stay with kind of the education part, um, and you know, and the research and the policy issues. We'll just yeah. let the policy folks deal with. I feel like policy, as it was originally here in number three, is yeah. still a good fit. Like if, yeah, yeah. if Kevin's doing research, say on right license compliance kind of stuff, and that has a 
direct contribution to the SPDX standard. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, yeah, if it's directly you know? related to it's there's, yeah, there's that difference between doing research that, uh, that, that touches on policy and, and, and advocating uh, for policy, for policies yeah. that you see is, and so I, I think it's those two differences. That, I, I gotcha. I getcha. Okay. Well, folks, we're actually at the end of time. Can you believe it? We had a good discussion. I told you when you show up so late. <laughs> when I show up so late, it's really late. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I really, like, I yeah, really do it. appreciate it. And I, 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 like, I, and I were felt, felt like, we're like, oops. Like, that's okay. That's it's totally okay. I'll reach out on the Slack channel just to yeah. kind of point to the calendar again. And I just, yeah. whether we end up with three or four, I don't, that's, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll sort that out. But again, what I'm trying to do is then kind of settle this conversation to get it into our specific goals and scopes for this group, but more specifically to get it into this, you know, functions as Kevin was calling it you know what I mean so that right. we can start kind of bringing forward metrics that speak to these things that can kind of kind of move off zero and that was that conversation that Saeed was having was it Helios right yeah. so because he's his his suggestion was that having something a bit more concrete to right. bring to Helios like here are some metrics that can speak to this one particular thing that might be right. useful to you would help kind of bridge the work that we're doing here with um, university. Because I think Helios is comprised of a lot of university, yeah. like administrative. administrative. And those are and those are the policy folks that would be interested. Yeah. In. So yeah. I, this this brings it up to them, and then they kind of yeah. I yes, and it gives them things to like hold on to, not ab not abstract things, but very specific things that can be used to identify to speak to these different things. Right, so exactly. that's the goal here. Is what I'm trying to trying to do. So. And I feel like, uh, yeah, uh, Said and I both got to get back. To, I think we had action items from October <laughs> from a month Well, ago. the action items were kind of looking at the document we just looked at. Yeah. And then also, I think once we can settle on that, then we can kind of move to the next document. Let's just do maybe one at a time at the moment. So, okay, cool. yeah, Kevin? Uh, it might be also interesting to think about where the overlap on these functions or goals are with the uh, folks over in the, uh, the Open Science Software Group. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they have more of a kind of a community project focus rather than a, a university organization focus. Uh, so when I see these four functioners, functions or these four goals, the overlap for me would be three and four overlap with the open science folks and one and two are kind of more specific to the, the university or the organization. So that's kind of another way to make the case for four maybe. He's like, I want my phone. I'm going to argue with more now just on principle alone. <laughs> I am All so right, not going to die on this hill. Yeah, that's, I, that's it. yeah I'm, I, I'm not either. I'm just uh, yeah, no. just something to think about. But yeah. All right, so I would, be, I would be fine merging four in with uh, uh, those three. I think I there mean, are you know, some. All it would probably things. go into all three, though. Yeah. There are just, you know, they're accordion, right? I mean, they, yeah. we, they get bigger, they get smaller. And yeah. 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 Um, okay, it was a great conversation, everybody. I really do appreciate the input and I'll post to the Slack channel so we get this back on people's calendar. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.